It's great to be joined today by David Sparks, who is a Democratic candidate for state representative in Ohio's 43rd House District, joining us today from Dayton, Ohio. Uh, David and I have known each other for, I guess, close to a couple of years at this point. He did some work yeah. with our website some time ago and continues to be a sort of tech advisor, I would say. Uh, and he is running in Ohio's 43rd House District. David, first for people, we've been talking about the importance of down ballot. We've been talking about the importance of building a progressive base within states. Talk a little bit about the dynamics of your race and, and sort of what you're up against right now. Wow. Um, the dynamics of my race um, really came to a fore yesterday, which we'll get to. But uh, yeah, I'm running in the 43rd district of <clears throat> for Ohio State Representative. And the 43rd district is a uh, it's just above the the city of Dayton limits, and it goes all the way out into uh, Preble County, Ohio, which is right on the Indiana border in Southwest Ohio. And um, yeah, this this was a race that uh, a lot of people expected. You know, we've got an incumbent in office with lots and lots of money, um, but we started campaigning last December um, in you know zero degree weather. Um, and have been doing so all the way through the summer in 95 degree weather, sometimes with heat indexes up you know, around 105. And as we saw yesterday, um, they're very worried that a grassroots campaign that doesn't take big money, doesn't take you know the, all of the uh, associated stuff that our traditional establishment politics takes, um, they're scared that uh, that we're going to win. And so. That's what uh, you know happened yesterday, but um, yeah, I want to get to that in a second. I mean, explain. I think what's interesting about this race is tell our audience the number of votes you expect it will take to win, because I think many people sometimes don't have a good sense of the reality that in a lot of these state house seats, you can put together a grassroots campaign without taking big money and be competitive because of the scale of some of these districts. Talk to us about the number of votes you think the winner will require here. Yeah, I've been told it's, uh, I'm not sure the exact number, it's over 28,000. Um, and I'm not sure the exact hundreds number, but it's around 28,000. And my district has a, you know, they have ratings, performance ratings, and it has a 51.6% um, Democratic performance rating, which means that I was picked to win from the beginning, but you know, not having all the big money and all that stuff. So <clears throat> that kind of put me behind, but we, we put together a volunteer force. I worked on the Bernie Sanders campaign. Um, some of the field organizers have come, you know, uh, from the Sanders campaign to work with me after that's all been up uh, after that all finished and you can get out and knock on, you know, you, 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 when you figure like 28,000, well, a lot of that 28,000 are, base Democratic voters. You know, you're going to get their votes. So actually it goes down as far as like the number of people you actually need to convert. Sure. Uh, and the same thing, you know, uh, would, would hold true on the Republican side if you were running things. Um, so yeah, you've, you're going towards a middle that's more like 10 to 15,000. Um, and with, you know, a group of five people out canvassing, out, you know, putting signs up, out speaking and advocating and doing social media, which, um, I think the other side just doesn't know how to handle it all. Um, you can reach thousands of people, um, and we can win these these races. We, and right now, we've got 19 state house races that are running unopposed. Had I not gotten onto the ballot, my race would have been completely unopposed, um, handed to a on a silver platter to my opponent. So let's talk about that a little bit, because your Republican incumbent opponent is clearly getting worried. The smear attempts have begun. I want to talk about this press conference in a second. But first, for our audience, I want to play just about a minute of a video that has come out attempting to smear you. Take a look at this. Welcome to the David Sparks Show, an ongoing exploration of issues and thought by award-winning journalist, artist and musician David Sparks. What are we going to talk about this week? Uh, What's on your mind? Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. We should show our warts and all. Exactly. And then I'm sure there, obviously there are people on the other side who so are like, Come on, we don't want to see sex, though. No. Yes, we don't want to know anybody dating. Do don't it. remind us. Don't, don't know that they yeah, do it. Yeah. They're doing it. Stop. They're doing it, doing it. <laughs> They're doing it. Doing it for themselves. That's all I got to say. Come on, America, be real. Be real. Yeah. <clears throat> get real. You didn't get here from going, Ooh. 
you got here from wow chicka wow chicka wow chicka wow wow. When I was 14 years old, I felt a titty for the first time. And it was an amazing feel. As a matter of fact, it pretty much threw everything out of my mind. It wasn't titty. Yeah. So, David, if this is what they're using to attempt to smear you, you know they're concerned, right? Yeah, because um, it actually totally flipped on them. I've had so many people say, like, wow, I really like you a lot more after watching that. <laughs> that shows you're a real person with a real sense of humor. And, you know, all of these videos, you know, we did, uh, you know, online style is a lot different than the traditional media. You know, if I were to, you know... I, I could take uh, any, say, for, from some of the young Turks or, you know, folks like that who are really kind of really brash, um, you know, we could, we could disqualify from them, them for running for office for their entire lives or any number of people. No doubt about um, what, it. Uh, and then and this what, escalated also, and I want to get to the part where, where we get to this press conference that you actually showed up at, set the stage for the audience of how you were being smeared and exactly what you did. Yeah, so um, I showed up at the uh, press conference about a half hour beforehand, um, and the first uh, 30 minutes or so were different people talking about the, the, my opponent, how great he was, and all, you know, all that, yada, yada. And then they brought up the uh, Speaker of the Ohio House to, uh, to do the hatchet job on me. And uh, he played this video montage that had been taken from, I've probably got 700 videos, 600, I don't, I've lost count, you know. There are music videos, there are comedy videos. Most of them are community journalism videos where I've advocated for things like not closing post offices in minority, poor minority communities or um, doing investigative journalism where we, we've exposed mismanagement um, within privatized operators in our county jail or I could go on and on. I've um, done a lot beyond this. This kind of stuff is just kind of a, a segment of my my whole creative world and we had a lot of fun doing them and people really like you know they've always said we love you and your wife what you guys are doing you keep it real it's fun and essentially it's just art you know and it's all done like long before I ever really got involved in politics. Yeah, I mean, um, it strikes me sort of like, I mean, this is not an exact analogy because, again, you are mixing in completely serious citizen journalism in, in what you do, but it's almost in a way like if an actor were to run for office and then you would critique that actor as an elected official uh, or potential elected official based on characters they played in fiction pieces. And I know that's not <laughs> all that you've done, but there's some element yeah. of that here, isn't there? Of course, yeah. A lot of the, all the music uh, pieces that we done that we that they featured were um, from my band Drexel, and you can listen to us at drexel.bandcamp.com. We performed around the Midwest, uh, from Detroit to Memphis, all places for around ten years. We were written up in like national ma music magazines, regional music magazines. Uh, got a lot of critical praise. Um, but yeah, and it was you know it was and it was an act like. You know, part of that act was based upon, you know, our influences that we got from life. Um, but, yeah, essentially it was show business. We were having fun. We were we were making art. Yeah. So you show um, up at this press conference. In addition, they were also adding the element of of, of uh, uh, slamming you, smearing you for drug use years and yeah. years ago that you had admitted to. So tell our audience what you do. I mean, it strikes me as it's got to be somewhat uncomfortable to show up when you're the subject of smears and say, hey, here I am. Well, actually, I was I, I, I kind of enjoyed showing up. So we got there. I <laughs> showed up and sat right in the front row. And uh, they did their thing. And then came the, uh, the hatchet man, um, Cliff Rosenberg. And uh, he started showing the clips. And uh, once he got to, um, like, the, the one song about me, you know, it was like, uh, it was, the song was about me touching a breast for the first time when I was 14 years yeah. old. And how, like, oh, my, it became the, the center of my entire world for a while after that. And and my the whole thing was like, this is why we need proper. It, it was about the, the whole. They took it out of context. They didn't mention the story included. Uh, we were talking about sex education and the lack of contraception and how different areas where they've cut sex education, the birth rate has skyrocketed. The H HIV and sexually other se sexually transmitted diseases uh, have skyrocketed. And so my song was about how we need to understand as adults how kids feel at that 
era of their life when they're discovering all their hormones and they're confused and they're like, oh my God, girls, 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 or boys, 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 boys. And we need to provide proper sexual education and, you know, and reaffirm that like, this isn't weird for you. This is like, this is a natural part uh, of growing up. And additionally, the, uh, they, they played another video where we were having a discussion about the drug war and the, the nature of addiction. Mm. Um, and I relayed the story, honestly, uh, that when I was 20 years old at a party at the University of Cincinnati, two metalhead guys came up to me and they were like, you know, want to do this, man? And uh, we did. <laughs> and I said, you know, I hated it. They, you know, they, we smoked crack with these guys. Like when I was 20, when I was 20, you know, and people have done, you know, President Obama has admitted drug use, like all kinds of different politicians. Yeah. It'd be different, you know, if I woke up every morning or did that. To, but, you know, I wanted to be honest and relay this so people, you know, we could talk honestly about the subject. Of course. And so they, they took something where I was attempting to add to the conversation a real experience and saying, you know, I didn't like this stuff at all. And, I, and it said it in the video. Like, I didn't, didn't like it, never did it again. I did, the whole scene creeped me out. Um, but, yeah, I, I, apparently 30 years is uh, not enough time um, to go through and, you know, and mature from an experience. And so it, it ended up, like, totally backfiring in their face. Like, all the comments yeah. we saw on social media, on the news articles that we've read were like, Give me a break, you hypocrites! You go back and smoke cigars and drink uh, martinis all night, and let's like, just like soak yourself in liquid drugs all the time. And if you've been around political conventions, you you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, the, yeah, the drug use is amazing, and like from you know morning till night, they you know these establishment political people drink, and uh, in in the hypocrisy involved in all that. And so yeah, they're trying to smear me for being completely honest and forthright and it ended up um, people were like I like you more now Dave and so what happened was uh, once he started going into these things uh, like he t yeah, he sings a song about touching a 14 year old girl's breasts and I, I yelled out that song was about when I was 14 <laughs> and touched my breast for the first time well, if there's yeah. any better indication that you can run against these incumbents, Republicans at the state level all across the country, it's that your grassroots campaign is now the subject of these smears. If anything, this is evidence that you actually are making an impact. And I wish progressives had a better understanding of this. And of course, you can find out more about David Sparks, campaign at uh, it's vote David dot com. Is that correct? No, vote David Sparks dot org dot org. I want to speak clearly this evening. Vote David Sparks dot org in the 43rd House District. Joining us from Dayton, Ohio. David, thanks so much. Hey, thank you very much for everything, David. You have a great day. Appreciate uh, the opportunity to come on.